Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with seven professional tips and tricks to make you a better player in Clash Royale. Have you ever wondered, why am I losing so many games? Why do my cards feel like trash? The answer is, you probably don't know the precise placements and timings that Clash Royale requires. If you want to win the majority of your games in Clash Royale and maximize your chances of winning, you have to make sure that you make no mistakes. If you incorporate these seven tips and tricks into your gameplay, you're gonna get better elixir trades, you're gonna win more matches, and Clash Royale is just gonna feel a lot more fun. Videos like this take a ton of time to create, so make sure to like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for daily videos on the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into the action and get everyone a little bit better at Clash Royale. This tip is absolutely dirty. If you've got Cannon Cart or Valkyrie, you can push it with the Wall Breakers to surprise your opponent. Usually Cannon Cart and Valkyrie are super slow cards, but when they're behind Wall Breakers, the Wall Breakers push them to full speed. Especially with Cannon Cart, you can catch your opponents off guard and deal a ton of damage. If you play Zap with Golem, Electro Giant, or any big beatdown deck, you need to know this. There are so many people in the meta running Fisherman Royal Giant, and they usually counter you, but you can completely outplay them with Zap. If you time your Zap correctly when the Fisherman is pulling your Electro Giant or Golem, the Fisherman gets just confused and stops pulling it. Since the Fisherman pulls your Golem halfway, the Fisherman's range is like, well, now I gotta go and walk towards the Golem. And obviously, if you wanna pull the Golem to the King Tower, your Golem goes back onto the tower and does devastating amount of damage. You can do a similar strategy with Tornado, but Zap is a lot better. If you time this correctly, your opponent will be absolutely furious and you'll probably take their tower. If you play Sparky and you're not doing this, you're literally giving your opponent free tower damage. When Royal Hogs are rushing at you and you drop Sparky in the middle, you're only gonna hit three piggies. The fourth one is just gonna lock onto your tower and do a load of damage. This is because the Sparky targets the outside piggy, so when it splashes, it doesn't have enough range to hit the outermost one. But if you drop your Sparky right down the middle behind your tower, it's gonna target the middle piggy and splash onto all four of the pigs at once, finishing off every single piggy faster and saving you hundreds of damage. In a close game, this could be the difference between winning and losing, especially since Royal Hogs are gonna be cycled way more than once on top of your tower. Almost everyone knows how to counter Bandit with Skeletons for a plus two elixir trade, but if you're not doing this placement, you're not playing correctly. When you drop your Skeletons here to counter the Bandit, even if your opponent drops a spell to finish off the Skeletons, the Bandit will still walk towards your tower. In every other placement, the Bandit will dash onto your tower, dealing double the damage. So this is the safest placement to counter Bandit with Skeletons for a plus two trade every single time. If you want to play like the pros, you'll minimize your risks and maximize your chances of winning every game. So use this placement and it will pay off. I see so many people doing this incorrectly. If you drop your mini P.E.K.K.A in the middle of the map, it's just gonna die against your opponent's mini P.E.K.K.A. But if you drop it low enough, your opponent's mini P.E.K.K.A will only get one shot. Your tower will help you out and your mini P.E.K.K.A will stay alive. When your mini P.E.K.K.A wins out and it's got half HP, it's gonna counter push and it will deal damage to your opponent's tower. Or they'll have to spend extra elixir to stop it, giving you a positive elixir trade, putting you in a better spot to win the game. Now we get to the stuff that almost no one knows in the game. This is something that I didn't even know until yesterday. If you wait three seconds after the graveyard skeletons start to spawn and use your tornado in this placement, it will almost always activate King Tower. This is crazy to me because it used to be the most unreliable thing ever, and now people are doing it consistently. And if you activate King Tower against Graveyard, every next defense that you do is going to be so easy. If you can activate King Tower with this placement and timing, you should immediately win the game. Watch here as my opponent goes in for an Ice Golem with a Graveyard, dropping 7 Elixir. I can defend with guards and take 0 damage. That's 7 Elixir that my opponent spent and got 0 damage, and he has to deal with the guards on the counter push. The last tip is the most difficult one in the game. If you perfect this, you're pretty much a machine. Dropping a Fire Spirit in this positioning and timing against another Fire Spirit completely counters it while your Fire Spirit doesn't take any damage, allowing your Fire Spirit to counter push and deal damage to your opponent's tower. A lot of pros know about this tip, but they never try it out in competitive matches because it takes so much skill. If you guys can hit this timing and placement perfectly or reliably, you might just be one of the best players to ever play the game. Like, subscribe for more daily content, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.